On this episode of Off the Record, I'm featuring a staple in the Detroit radio scene for the last two decades. Mojo in the Morning from Channel 955, a native of Chicago who made the Motor City home in 1999 and is currently the longest running morning radio show host for a singular station. The familiar voice stopped by the Allen Park training facility to share his love for the Lions and his story. I woke up this morning and your voice was the first one I heard. It, it was, 100%. I get in my car, I'm driving here to work, and now you're here sitting across the table from me, Mojo. So this is insane. Do you know how flattering that is? I, well, I, you, what, how many people listen to the show every day? We have a lot. We've, there's, uh, at, some, at certain points of the show, like between like 7.30 and 8.30, I think they uh, say that we have like over 1.8 million people oh that gosh. listen. Because we're on in Detroit, Grand Rapids, in Toledo. Yeah. So that's so – it is very flattering. Like anytime anybody ever says, uh-huh. hey, I was listening to you this morning. Yeah. Or people will the, – the other thing is people will scream out to me. Like I'll tell a story about, you know, uh, getting locked out of my house in my underwear, you know, uh, and people will scream, what underwear are you wearing? Like they'll scream that to you like at a Kroger. So oh, my gosh. So it's very – it's always flattering. Because you're a normal person once you're yeah. off the show. I'm a normal person all the time. <laughs> but to me, I'm a normal person that just so happens to talk to people like in, in the morning. So it's it's very cool. And they get to know so much about you and your family yeah. and, and the rest of your co-hosts. I feel like I know you guys extremely well. That's the point. We That's what we – that's our goal. That's mm-hmm. what we – we hope that we accomplish that every morning mm-hmm. um, by – uh, telling a story that might be relatable, mm-hmm. you know, giving you an opportunity that goes that says, "Oh man!" I always say, tell everybody, my goal with uh, telling a story on the air or having listeners call in and tell their dysfunctional craziness is for people to go, "My life isn't so bad," <laughs> you know. I I agree hundred percent. I relate to a lot of it. There's a lot of things I don't relate to, like thank God, War of the Roses, which we'll get to, yes. which we need to talk about okay. some of the segments that you guys do and how all of these come together. When did Thomas, though, that's your real first name, yeah. when did that become Mojo? So it became uh, Mojo when I first started doing radio. So I was 19 when I first started in radio. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm my father's from Cuba, and it was a kind of a name of a, a friend of his. And I kind of had that name kind of off and on, mm-hmm. um, being Mojo. And I was looking for a radio name, looking for something that was memorable. And that was kind of the name, you know, that that stuck and worked. So I honestly felt really lucky that I was able to have a name that was easy to remember. Yeah, no, it is 100 percent. And I'm, I'm just like, how have I not heard another mojo on, on the radio? radio? There's yes. a couple out there. There's actually a few. OK, actually, the most honestly, when I first moved to Detroit, there was the most one of the most famous radio people was the electrifying mojo. Um, on radio who, here. He was on, on the radio here back in the day on, oh on WJLB. So wow. I was – and at first they didn't want me to use the name Mojo. And I told them, I said, you got to be kidding me. Like I've got the Backstreet Boys saying they listen to Mojo. You know what I mean? And so I, and I had celebrities that were – that said George Clooney and Matt Damon and mm-hmm. people like that. And I'm like, i got to be able to use Mojo. Yeah. And Cause, so – Because you – because would you record them saying, oh, I listen to Mojo? Oh, my God, Because I know yeah. you play that on the show now. You should see all the – like we've had Lions players from, from over the years that uh, – I was so sad when Ndamukong Sue wasn't a Lion anymore mm-hmm. because – my favorite was me trying to get, pronounce Nadamik and Sue with him, yeah, and uh, and him laughing at us. So <laughs> I love that. Uh, you went to Columbia College in Chicago, in Chicago, yeah, which was a communications uh, school. So you knew from the get go that kind of radio hosting was was that, what you're going to go into. I want was no, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Really, which is funny because I want I always wanted to be the play by play guy for the Chicago Cubs. Okay, like that was my ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. And then um, having gotten into radio and doing what I do, I realized, okay, this is a little bit easier to get into. Like, I, it's easier to, to find a job. But then over the years, I've always been fascinated. I, I, I talk to Dan Miller all the time because I listen to the radio broadcast because I think Dan Miller's like the best. Best. He's like, there's no, yes. there's no play-by-play guy that is as, as good as Dan Miller. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll text him during games sometimes yeah and just tell them that was incredible that touchdown like you know that you called or or a disappointing ending to a game you know a reaction from him because he's such a fan but that was the kind of he's the exact 
kind of broadcaster that made me want to get into to broadcasting. Does he know this? Oh, yeah. I tell him all the time. Okay. I'm a little bit – I actually envy Dan not just as a broadcaster. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing dad, amazing husband. Mm-hmm. He is – I mean – I, I'm mesmerized by people who have a lot of stuff going on in their personal lives and you don't know about it unless you know them personally mm-hmm. and you realize this guy is, first off, it's just a real r- person, mm-hmm. but he's he's one of the most talented people around. He is. And he, he would like to do it under the radar with no one knowing. Yeah. Either. That's just how he is. Yeah. We he's good. You. We love you, Dan. He's the best. More people need to do that because nowadays it seems like there are more people that like to shine a spotlight on mm-hmm. It's things that are going on. Look at what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Dan's one of those guys that doesn't. Yeah. He just he comes and he's a pro every game. He's a pro. I that 100. Um, percent So where were the stops in between Columbia and Detroit? All right. So Columbia got me an internship in Chicago okay. at B96. Got me hired at B96. Mm-hmm. And actually, my job that I got, my first job that I got there, was because it's you always say right place, right time. Yes. Somebody called in sick five minutes before their shift. Nobody was there to fill in. The person that could fill in lived in the suburbs of Chicago, was over an hour from getting to the radio studio. So there'd be an hour without somebody on the air. And it was, hey, you're next up. Go on the air. Next man up. And I, they say I killed it. I listened back to the to this show. It was awful. Oh, you do? Do you still have it somewhere? I saved? actually have, I have a box. My wife put together this box for me of... Every I have tapes from past shows, Mm -hmm. and then she lets me save. I say lets me because otherwise I'd have so much crap in the house. But I have like a T-shirt or some kind of a thing from each station that I've been at. So I went from there, Tucson, Arizona, um, and then Detroit. And so I worked at a bunch of different radio stations along the way, like part-time doing Mm -hmm. things. But those were like the big three for me. My, My last stop before Detroit, so a year and a half ago, was Tucson. Was it? Yes. What did you do in Tucson? I was working for the football team, University of Arizona's football team. Oh, my God. Yeah. There was well, like I was a biggest Wildcat code. fan. Were you? Okay. That would, I'm trying to think. Was that like the, the so Cecil I, era or the Teddy no, Bruschi I, era? No, I was Teddy Bruschi. I was Desert okay. Storm. Yes. So I was there for Desert Storm, and then I became, I I actually, Teddy and his wife mm-hmm. lived right by Chelsea and I, my really? wife and I. But, and actually, they still live in the similar neighborhood. They still have mm-hmm. a house back there. But- Lou Olson became a friend of mine. Like oh I got to, to live it. And then, uh, you know, Kevin Griggs, who's with the Pistons. Okay. He's their Pistons media guy. Yeah. He was actually in the athletic department at U of A at the same time. We both moved here at the similar time. Oh, my gosh. So there's a lot of former cats here. So There's a ton. And yeah. I didn't really realize it until I got out there. I'm like, oh, of course you got – it's a basketball Best school. Best Mexican but food ever in Tucson. I didn't actually – when you're in the football office, you work about mm, 15, 16 hour days. I did not get you to don't experience eat. Mexican food. You don't get to eat like at I all. Should've. Oh, okay. no. You don't really go outside of the building. Okay. So I didn't get to experience it. What was your favorite part about Tucson, though, besides the Mexican food? Um, it's a small town. Um, Detroit's like this. Okay. It's a small town that the you can affect people in such a way. Uh-huh. Like, people are like, Detroit is like this in the fact that radio still matters to people in Detroit. Yes. There's some cities like New York and Los Angeles. Even Ryan Seacrest will tell this to me. Mm-hmm. Ryan will say, you know, I have to like do television. I have to do, does, you know, yeah. big projects mm-hmm. for people to kind of notice things. Yeah. When in reality, I'm on the radio every single morning talking to more, the bigger population. But the problem is that it doesn't matter as much to them. Like mm. Detroit still looks at TV and radio people as they're kind of like cool and, you yeah. know. No, I agree 100% with that. And that's how Tucson was. Tucson, you were, you'd were you get front row tickets to a, a Cats game if you were on the radio or on yeah. television there. Oh, I love that. Go Cats. Yes. They're, they're doing okay. Football team's doing okay right now. They're, yeah. they're on the up. So we're excited about that. Uh, you got to Detroit in 1999. You've held this position ever since. So the longest Running, I I tout this because I was just given this piece of history. Um, I'm the longest running single person on a radio morning show, hosting a morning radio show on one signal. Like so, ninety five five channel nine five five in Detroit. I've been on the air there for twenty two years, going to be twenty three years, and there has not been, I guess, anybody that's been at one station in the mornings doing it 
longer. Which honestly, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's it's, it's longevity. Longevity, uh, just being able to sustain yeah. at such a high level, I think is like that's I'm what the we're Jason all after. Hansen. Yeah. Of yes. The, of the uh, radio crew, I guess. Mr. I Reliable, know. always there. I golfed with Jason Hansen like a year ago. A buddy yeah. of mine's friends with him, and he's a really good golfer. Mm-hmm. And he had his worst golf game the day mm-hmm. I golfed with him, and he was. He's a very like religious, nice man. You know what I mean. He was not. He was not feeling it with me. That I felt so bad. I told him. I said, I think it's me. And he goes, No, I'm just horrible today. But he's. That was a guy that I think about. What it. You know, you always look at the kicker and go, What a job. I mean, this guy doesn't have to do. What a great job. You don't have to like do anything. But Jason Hansen was so automatic. I mean, you're also a big fan of of Barry Sanders, and he was what one of the first people you met when you got to. So I was a Bears fan when I first moved here. Yeah. Growing up in Chicago. Yes. But which is funny because you're from Monroe, Mm -hmm. right? You could have been a Browns fan. No. No. No, That was not. That would never happen. My dad would never let that happen. So I did a I did a charity event with Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm. It was right, you know. In 1999, so that was fairly close to right after Barry said he wasn't going to play. Yeah. And he wasn't doing very much at that time. As a matter of fact, nobody saw him. And I got to host this event just because the charity asked me to host it, and I got lucky. And I got to meet the legend. And there's no better, you know, ever running back than Barry Sanders. And I think that meeting him personally made me realize how big of a fan. And then for some time, I would go – uh my buddy used to do an open gym at Our Lady of Refuge okay. in uh, Orchard Lake, and Barry would play basketball, and his you know son would play basketball. Mm-hmm. So you'd see him every now and again, and that made me. And then, um, I Cal, our Calvin Johnson, and then honestly Dominic Rayola. I coached I coached Dylan Rayola in basketball. Okay. Do you know the story about Dylan Rayola? No. Dylan Rayola. Has as a sophomore in high school or junior in high school now I think he's a junior signed as a sophomore with Ohio State he's he's his age group he's the number one recruit college recruit for his age wow he's gonna he he looks like Patrick Mahomes playing football he has Dom Riola's like just grit and mm-hmm. kind of a can you swear on this or no no. Being Depends. a being kind of a you know a jerk how Dom was okay and he's as sweet as can be so I coached uh, Dylan and Dom uh, Rayola was the greatest dad and you know always was real supportive mm-hmm. and um, it was funny because Dylan was more excited about Mojo being his coach than I I was probably on par with the fact that I was coaching you know right. Dom's son mm-hmm. the Lions. They grew on you. It made you made it made it easy yeah. to be a Lions. So I became fan. a Lions fan. Yeah, okay, and good. it's 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 hurt a little bit. It's okay. It's but, okay. Yeah, we're doing we're doing fine. I know we're on the we're we are the Lions. The future of the Lions in all the time that I've been a Lions fan, and I know for a lot of people, I haven't felt this excited about the future of the team mm-hmm. in a in a long long time. Yeah. Is it the coaches, the players? What is it? I think it's well. I mean, it starts with Brad, and I think that. He gets it, like uh-huh. like I'm like looking at what he's done, the moves he's done, and I'm and I'm going, how does he, how is he allowed to make moves like this? And people are allowed, let he, are doing this. Um, and then Dan, you know, how do you not like Dan Campbell? How, how do you not look at that guy and go, like that guy would be a, if you were to have a morning radio show and mm-hmm. he were the host, he would he would be number one. Yes, because he says percent. stuff that you. Go. That's all. I want to listen mm-hmm. to what he's doing. You yeah. know. Yeah. I, I I I watch his press conferences online just to get sound bites. They're great sound bites. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, he exactly how he is in front of a camera is how he is off of it. That's great. He's hilarious. He can be serious when he needs to be. Just great human. So I'm glad. You I want to know how many that. stars he has on his Starbucks app. Because he drinks so much Starbucks, they say that. Uh, that's what he said. Yes. Like, does he ever, does he use his stars? Does he use his his stars to get a free coffee? I'll write that down on a piece of paper. Ask and put him that, that in his, his little box outside his office. All right. If he had one, we'll get him one. We'll get him a box, and we'll, get him we'll a ask box. him how many stars he has. Okay. Um, I so you said about 1.8 million people watch or listen, or listen to yeah. your show at peak time in the morning. Yep. Which is insane. And then with on that, talk about watch. Yeah. Social media wise, um, I. I think that we're right up there as far as in Detroit with, 
you know, maybe Dave and Chuck the Freak with uh, the amount of social media followers that, that we have. Insane. So it's good. Yeah. yeah. We're, when, we're very blessed. When did that, like, when did it start peaking at, like, 1.8 million people? Well, honestly, <laughs> before COVID. And yeah. then after when nobody was working and doing anything, it, then it turned to podcasting. Yeah. And because of, you know, we iHeart Radio was so smart years ago to mm-hmm. create its own app. That helped us a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we... Uh, We've been really lucky. I mean, honestly, there are other radio shows in the country that have struggled to get people to come back to listening to radio consistently. Mm. Um, Detroit, though, has been really good. You mm-hmm. know, we've been really blessed with that. Mm-hmm. But we have to give them something to listen to all the time. Like it's you tough. Do. You can't phone it. You you can't phone it in. And there are days when you feel like you're phoning it in. But um, people are in, are into it. We have some passionate. P1s, you know? Yeah. Uh, your co-host, uh, you, you got Spike, you got Shannon, Mike's up there in Grand Rapids, you got uh, Megan Mick down in Toledo. Uh, when did that kind of group assemble? It's It's been evolving. You know, it's, okay. we started with a whole different group back in 2000, and then we got a whole different group in 2005, and then got a whole different group in 2008, and then a whole different group in 2012. We've the alum. We have as many alumni in our group than the Lions have probably yeah, in a, their alumni group. And I think you have to do that as a show. Really, like you have to have a, a very similar core. Mm-hmm. And we kind of kept that together. Yeah. Um, but my goal is to surround like our audience is you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 52 years old. How old are you? 26. All right. You're our audience. You're exactly the audience. Yeah. So we try to appeal to a 25 to 34 year old female. Really? And as a 52 year old, uh, you know, married guy mm-hmm. with sons that my son is your age. My mm-hmm. oldest son, Joe, is your age. Yeah. Um, you know, I try to surround myself around people that are your age that can. So it doesn't sound like I'm a creepy 52 year old <laughs> guy talking about things that are interesting to you. Right. I sound like, you know, a person that is interested and intrigued by what people mm-hmm. do. People sometimes will say to me, you're how old? Like, if I talk about my sons, like, I talk about my kids so much. I thought your oldest one were, was older than 26. Did you? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's funny because of uh, Joe is, actually, Joe is older than 26. He's 27. <laughs> he turned 20. He was born in 1995. But my youngest is 17. Wow. And so I still kind of hold on a little bit to knowing what a 17 year old is interested in but um and our goal is we've given people the opportunity that you know are coming up Mm -hmm. an opportunity to be on the radio and my goal is to never hold anybody back i'd love them to go get their own show like my son joe jed and ashley his two uh, partners everybody came through our morning show really and are doing things and then there's like five or six other people around the country that have been are working different uh shows of their own okay that have left our show wow um, now that we've gotten into the, the characters that are a part of the show, um, I have to give you my just like description of the show's personalities. And okay. you can tell me if it's accurate or not. All right, go ahead. Okay, I'll start with my girl Shannon because um, she's the GOAT, obviously. I love what it, I love like what she brings to the show, her different points of view. I mean, you guys talk about personal stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, so Shannon to me is she's a cool mom. But she can also be very fiery with a lot of passion in there. And she is like probably one of the most open minded people. Am I am yeah. I close? Oh yeah. Okay. Um Spike, I saw I what I when I hear this two days ago, Spike is Spike from a, a caller. Yeah. Was that yesterday? That was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, so give Spike I, a compliment. I, I her, Spike is Spike. I asked the caller the caller complimented Shannon. Oh yeah, right off the and bat. said to Shannon how beautiful she yes. was. And then uh, said, Mojo, you're, you know, you're great looking or something like that. And then I said, well, what about Spike? And they're like, well, Spike is Spike. They said something like Spike looked like Pee Wee Herman. But <laughs> they did say that. Self-deprecation, yeah. we love. Oh, my, you guys crush it with that. Everybody. And even Shannon, who, you know, if you look at Shannon's Instagram, it's like there's never a thing out of place, it seems like. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always sit there and go, God, if I could take a picture that's one of Shannon's bad pictures, I would be like a, it would be a yeah. good day. Um, but yeah, we're pretty good at, at that. So Spike okay. is what? Um, <sighs> Spike is. Say it. Come I on. Know, don't. I know. No, I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of phone scams because I love his phone yeah. scams. They're hilarious. 
I'm going to say like, I want to say persistent. Yeah. Just in all facets because he has those quirky, weird yeah. facts that he always knows. He's very persistent at making it. People have always said Spike's no. a know-it-all. So Spike, yes. Spike is like the guy. I would say persistent know-it-all then. Yeah. We'll combine them. Spike is definitely, he's one of those guys, like he's the, he's the, uh, use a like an analogy from nowadays he's the guy that is um that always you know you you can you can sit there and go yeah so i was watching the lions game yesterday and even if he doesn't know anything about the lions game he'll like pretend like he's watched the, li- the lions game like he definitely but he, he nine out of ten times he's actually right with some of with his no with 100%. His facts. Yeah. yeah no and the phone scams are hilarious i i'm like these are so annoyingly funny yeah i listen to them every day though um megan we live like 15 minutes apart so if you want to let yeah. me know that and like we can go get drinks that'd be great um toledo is, by the way is a, is for lions fans to you're, you're talking about being a lions fan i joked with you about being a browns fan just because occasionally we'll get browns fans that it's 50 50 in toledo w- but Same i will with say Ohio this to State you Michigan. people from toledo are the best they're great they are if toledo they they believe that toledo is the greatest city in the world i know and don't question it and you know what it's a great city it gets mm-hmm. crapped on a lot, but it's 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 like Detroit. I always say that Detroit and Toledo are got that same kind of vibe because Grand Rapids is like nice, really cool. It's cool, you know. Yeah. There's cool stuff going on there. Toledo and Detroit, you got to like search for the cool stuff. But when you find it, don't know. There's some cool stuff going. There's on. Some really cool stuff. Yeah. I, I lived in Toledo. My first job in local sports was Toledo, so Toledo is very close yeah. to my heart. But Megan is very unapologetically herself. Yes, and she's hilarious about it too. People, when they say, I say to Megan, this is the greatest compliment. When they say, I'm I'm like Megan, you know, yeah. you say I'm like Megan because Megan doesn't understand that there are a lot of people that that look up to her. Mm-hmm. Like you called Sh- uh, Shannon, uh, what would you say, call her goals or what did you say? Goat. Goat. Yeah. You said the goat. So Sh- and a lot of women will say Shannon's goals, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Megan oh, says yeah. that. I think that Megan's goals. Yeah. Because Megan is, she's so, I, I always tell people and she'll hate me for saying this. She is the female me. Like really? if I would if I were, you know, thirty years old and single and mm-hmm. hanging out, you put a wig on me, I'm Megan. Put a wig and some nice makeup and she's I'm gonna Megan. hear this. Like I can just I can just hear her like crying voice right now. Yeah. She's gonna be Why so are you saying No, she's saying she's saying, I hate you. That would be her thing. <laughs> she's great. Um Mike is a dad. That's all I yeah. Mike's <laughs> Isn't a dad. That funny? Yeah, he's yeah. a dad. He's the biggest Lions fan. Is he? Okay. Out of anybody on the show, he is the biggest he Lions the fan. Way. He goes to more Lions games than anybody, and he lives in Grand Rapids. Yeah. Which is funny because that's the thing that the Lions need to be so excited about. Their fans travel. Mm-hmm. They love it. He go. He went to the Lions, you know, game last year in L.A. because oh, he was, he was the yeah. you know he was big fan and actually, um, you know, the Staffords were cool to host him, so he oh, was able that, to yes. you know because. Mm-hmm. He's not in. We're not all wildly rich, but he was able to go out there because they they gave back and they helped our our breaking and entering oh, Christmas charity yeah, and stuff. That. So mm-hmm. oh, that's that's lovely. Um, KP is new. She's new, and she's actually she's twenty three. She's from Lake that's Orion. Insane. She's a TikTok phenomenon too. That's how, actually how I found her. That, that yeah, we were talking about one of the newscasters that just is going viral, and that's how you get yeah. jobs now. And it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's. I wasn't prepared for this. Your social, I know. It's funny because yeah. I am not huge personally on social media. Yeah. Like I throw pictures up so my sisters can see their, mm-hmm. you know, niece or their nephews, you know, doing things. Yeah. But nowadays you have to be like huge. You have to be on, on Your social game has to be huge. And if you don't, if you miss the boat, like it's literal like money you're missing out on. Yeah. 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 It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know if I hate it or And love players it. are like that too. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, it's it's funny with fantasy football. If you're not if you're if your viral game is not big, yeah. I mean you even though you will get you know score points for people in fantasy football, people like like my son drafts the personalities to be on his team. Okay. If this is I would love to talk about some of the topics that you guys have on your show, how okay. they come together because if you're listening to the show, you're like, "How did you come up with these random topics?" And it sounds like Everyone kind of just brings their own topics and maybe presents them every morning. Every, no- every night, okay. we, we have to turn in a diary, a, sh- uh, a, a topic diary. Okay. And so every night everybody has to turn in one to two things that happened to them that day. Okay. And what we do is we compile the list of everything that's going on in people's lives. And then myself and KP, 
um, go through it and say, all right, this is how we're going to do it. We try to put a good mix of, of things. Um, when their parents listening with their kids in the car, we try to keep away from some of the more controversial stuff. Right. And then once the kids are dropped off at school, I mean, it's anything goes. Mm. You know, it's talking about lots of uh, stuff that you don't talk about on this podcast. <laughs> By the way, this is the longest I've gone without swearing, except for on the radio. Proud of so, you. Yeah, I'm, that's, in, pr- that's incredible. This might be the only podcast I have never swore, I had a, a swear word on. So We appreciate we that. Keep it clean. It's less editing for me. I, I the really Fords are happy that. with me. Right. Um, yeah, we, we, we need that. Uh, if this is my most toxic tra- trait, then I'm okay with it. But I religiously listen to War of the Roses segment yes. on your show. Yeah. And it's that's horrible of me to look forward to that. Do you know how that segment started? No. So it started, I was in Arizona okay. working in a KRQ. Because they have one up there. I would listen to it KRQ. in Tucson. Actually, the show that took over for me, John Jane Rich, they still do started it. doing it when I left. Yes. So it started because there was a survey that said that if you had a choice, if a guy had a choice of who he would send a dozen, free dozen roses to, who would he send the roses to? It was a Cosmo survey. I still mm-hmm. remember that. And majority of the guys said that they would send it to their mom or their girlfriend. So it started with me and the two people that I worked with yeah. in Tucson, Betsy and um, Jeff, who was my uh, producer, calling girls, uh, boyfriends and husbands to see where they'd send flowers to just to get the reaction of what it would sound like if you sent it to the you know your mom. And you started catching them. And we that. caught one. We caught oh, one cheater. My gosh. And then that one cheater turned into, let's do this again. And <gasps> yeah. And it turned into to that. So, oh and how gosh. different it is uh, now because now it used to be one of those things where you could do and, you know, you could do it live and everything. Now we have to tape them and we got to get permission to run yeah, them. Yeah. You got to talk do to all the that lawyers. Stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. So I happen to live in Tucson, hear War of the Roses, and I just assumed every radio station was doing that now. It's kind of, they. a lot of them did it. Oh my, yeah, you did, you a lot of them like, have. trademark that or anything? Yeah, thanks. I appreciate you so much for... Like, what are we doing? I'm not a very good Don't business. Don't you want to retire So not soon? only am I a social media failure, I am a trademark failure. I did percent. trademark phone scams, though. So nobody, Oh, you did? So no one did, else does that? We trademarked phone scams. Okay. We actually have... So we have, like, War of the Roses trademarked, but it's trademarked here okay so it's not nationally but That's i will tell you this this is actually an interesting thing ryan seacrest does ryan's roses okay and was gonna call it war of the roses but actually made a comment that the reason he did not call it war of the roses because he didn't want to call it the same thing that we called it thank you ryan so seacrest. thank you ryan wow, so ryan so nice not only him. is he beautiful and rich yeah but he's a kind man it's very kind how often so do people just email you guys? They call you? They're like, hi, I think my so significant other is cheating. for everything that we do, so we do a bunch of things. If, yeah. if you listen to our show, we do phone scams. We do five lies, tell your mom. Yep. We do six on sex. We do a bunch of different things. We'll solicit through the show or we solicit on our social media or on our website, mochonthemorning.com. Yeah. Do you want to be a guest on this? And people will send it in to us. And uh-huh. then what we do is we have – People like Lydia, one of our associate producers, goes through and then she'll call the people, talk to them Mm -hmm. and, you know, get the story. Some stories we won't do. We try to stay away from anything that um, like we we used to do a lot of ones where like she's pregnant with a baby and thinks that he's cheating. We we used to do those. But then we realized that like we were possibly causing health risks for her. And we're like, you know, we just want to get involved. Not that, you know, her finding out if her spouse is cheating while she's pregnant isn't valuable. It is valuable yes. for her. Like she wants, it's peace of mind, but we don't want to get involved in anything that no. potentially could be harmful. So, oh my God. Yeah. So there's certain ones we'll stay away from. That's crazy. Do you have little kids calling up? We've had little kids calling. So here's one, here's one for you. We've had little kids that have entered. I think my daddy is cheating on my mommy, or I think my mommy is cheating on my daddy. What do they message you on social media? No, they've entered like text messages to us. Like they'll send uh, a text in the morning to nine five five zero zero, or they'll even like on a social media thing make a comment on a social media post or DM us and say that to us. And you know, although it's extremely compelling, yes, it would be 
really bad to do. Crazy. Do you think that you're helping more people or or harming more people? You know, this segment? if we ask the listeners that, I think okay. the majority of them probably say helping. I think so too. I think in a, in many cases, it's a mixture of both. Okay. So you we can we could technically help somebody by exposing that one of you know their mm-hmm. you know their spouse is being unfaithful. Um, which is definitely not a great thing, but mm-hmm. then eventually in the long run, you know, we hope that uh, we're able to give them advice through having a counselor help them out, or we've mm-hmm. had we have a divorce attorney that gives yes. legal advice for free. So, so you will hook them up after that and, yeah. and make sure that they're yeah. taken care of. Wow, yeah, I listen to it religiously. If I don't catch it on, if I don't catch it live. It's on the podcast. You're like our biggest fan. I love this. It's crazy. Do you I want was... to work for us? We were looking for somebody. <laughs> okay. It could be great. I have a proposal for you guys. <laughs> but let me ask you an honest yeah, question go like for this. Because it's funny, I uh, I've had people like media, people in media. Mm-hmm. I know sports is obviously like the 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 thing, but local media people will come and fill in for us. Yeah. Like fill in for Shannon or fill in for Megan or fill in for really? me. Really? I've never heard that. When I'm gone. Like we've had like um back in the day, like uh Karen Drew from Local oh, Four. Love Karen. Or uh, Anne Marie LaFlame, who mm-hmm. was on Channel 7. Like they would come in and do stuff with us. When they come in, they get so excited over the freedom that you have to be able to talk. Oh. Like you sometimes get mm. to have to talk in segments, right? Sure. So you get X amount of time to be able to do something. Yeah. In radio, it's kind of like, all right, it's we, a we have to break at 12 after. It's, you know, yep. top of the hour, you got 12 minutes to talk. That's a long time. Mm hmm. Um, would you ever be interested in doing that? So I, and I thought about, so I really started listening to, I've listened to you guys all 26 years, of, well, technically 22 years of my life, because if you guys got on 90, in 99, um, I was not listening to you guys on a ba- when I was a baby. I take that you back. You were a fetus. A, a fetus us. when I was listening. In no. One, and you were kicking in your mom's <laughs> womb. When I, when I heard, when I heard Mojo's voice. Exactly. When oh. you heard the War of the Roses. <laughs> Which is horrible. Um, I really started listening to you guys religiously 2020. During the almost during the pandemic, because really? towards the end of that, so this was almost two years ago, uh, sports shut down. I had transitioned from doing local sports in Toledo, Ohio, to kind of going out on my own. I'd been able to secure some commercials and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool, there's things on the horizon. And then the world shut down, and sports shut down. So I was out of work for about six months. So I had to go nanny. I had to go drive 45 minutes up to Ann Arbor and nanny for about three or four months. You guys are on my on my radio in my car every single morning. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is really different. Because at that point, you're considering other jobs yeah. and whatnot. Thankfully, University of Arizona had called me in December. So I was like, fine. But it was during football season, nanny, then I'd go do football games. And this was only two years ago, which is insane. But I'm like listening to Shannon. And I'm like, I hope Shannon retires doing this. Because this would be the best freaking thing ever Yeah. to retire doing. To you know? do that kind of a job. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I um, it's funny. Back in the day, Heather Catalo, Karen Drew were like yes. my go-to's. Yeah, and the only way I could get them to come in and do stuff for mm-hmm. us was because they were the coming up people. Okay. So because they were the, you know, the two on their stations that wanted to like make a, a name, you know, for themselves, mm-hmm. they were willing to wake up early in the morning and go do it. Like real but early. I will. I I will say this to you, the. The one thing that people don't understand with morning radio, and this is something for the Lions uh-huh. too, the amount of people that listen to us, but also our social following, mm-hmm. and what how active our listenership is. Yeah. Like our listenership is very active. The people that listen to us, we've been on for 20-some mm-hmm. years. So my, my listenership stems from people who are as young as now, high school kids that are coming up right now Mm -hmm. that are listening with their or middle school kids coming up with their parents listening to the car to 50 60 year old people that are Mm -hmm. listening so it's such a wide you know and vast um listenership and it's predominantly female that's crazy to me so it's probably about 70 percent 75 percent female and it's honestly it's amazing that um, the engagement that we have, like, mm-hmm. like that's the other thing too. Is you can have followers, but if you don't have engagement, first off, you probably have bots. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, who knows? But we have like really amazing engagement. You mm-hmm. know, um, you know, we could post a picture, and within five six minutes, we could have five thousand, you know, likes or yeah. you know, a couple thousand comments on something. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool when when that happens. And then on TikTok, I mean. I think that, you know, 
we that game is growing bigger and bigger all the time. It's crazy. And we're probably, you know, we're probably still learning with everybody mm-hmm. else, but that's something that blows up even more. Yeah. You know? It's well you guys have what, probably hundreds hundreds of people calling in every day to the show? Uh like, pretty much. Or commenting, you know, through texting. text or I would say I'm gonna start texting into the show. You I should. Never you should definitely. Actually, okay. you know what? You do that, and I'll save your number in there. Okay. Because we have a text board. Like, oh, you do. Oh yeah, we have like a big, big screen board, and it's got names up there, and it will say, you know, um, Misfit Nicole, and it will say your Misfits. It okay. will say, you know, Danny. It will say like whatever, and then you know who it is because you see the comment. And then we'll go, oh, you know, let's call that no person back. No way. Yeah. I did not know there was a board. Yeah. I thought you guys were just kind of like, phone. it's, you know, it's kind of cool. It's like a, it's, it's our text scoreboard, oh so my to gosh. speak. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. You, we have talked, I feel like we've touched on everything. Uh-huh. Um, but I do, I do, I said, you're like, oh, you want to come host for us? I'm like, oh, I have a proposal. I literally Done. have it written down in here. Like, here. You, your proposal I'll of what this. you want to do? I literally have my proposal written down to you All guys. All right. Good. It's right here on this thing. When you guys go out for the summer and I have to listen to reruns of the show. Okay. Let me do it for you. All right. Just we can do that. It. Just think of, I have to clear we with can the do bosses that. I, and everyone. Actually, but. no. We would honestly, we okay. would love you to, we, to just, do it. Just, you have my number now. All I right. have to clear it. I All have right. not talked to the bosses yet. Listen, I, you gave me presents. I got like, I got, you know, swag. I got Lions gear. Oh, we hooked you gear. Uh, Yeah. I was like, this is like cool. I'm, I, I'm oh, challenging we take care of every people. other team in this town. Bring it on. Bring it. Yeah. I'll talk about you as much as I possibly yeah. can. I know. I, I was listening to you guys talk about some Hard Knocks topics and stuff, and I'm like, oh, gosh, they don't I know. They have no idea. How big was Hard Knocks for you guys? Was that the biggest thing ever? Honestly, in the building, because I'm in the building, it was very low-key. Really? When you when they say you do not see them or hear them, you really don't. Okay. And there's about 40 Hard Knocks crew members walking around at all times. All right. It was very low-key for us. I'm not going to lie. But to the masses, it was like it was huge. It was behind the and scenes, and they got some really good, really good storylines, and people learned a lot, a lot about the lines. Yeah. But for us, you see all those hits in practice, and and the coach speak and everything. We hear it. We've we've already heard it. So yeah, it's like we, we're hearing it. And can you? Because this is my thing. I want to go. Can I go into the auditorium where, you know, Aiden, you know, was singing? Like, can we show me? Will you give me a tour? We might be able to do that. We might. Right. They're they're at practice right now. Oh, are they so really? We have to like. Yeah, do a little whiny thing. I went a couple years ago. I got to go on a road trip with the team. I, I told you this yeah, before we you literally started went taping on road, this. Yeah, and it was the cool. First off, it was like the greatest way to travel. I will never. It's the best so I'll way. give you an example of what I was wowed by. I was wowed by the fact that I got to wa- go show up, and there was like the guys getting out of their cars and stuff like yes. that with their bags mm-hmm. and all that. And then we ate beforehand, so we yep. went into the cafeteria and got to eat, and it was like. Wild to see all these big linemen, you know, large, large men grabbing food, mm-hmm. and then going to um, uh, the airport. Yep, and getting on a charter flight, mm-hmm. and we sat. I sat in the back of the plane. Same. Which is honestly the best place to sit because you're is. sitting by, you know, Dan Miller and oh, Wojo he's my seat buddy. Yeah, you get on, guys. you get on the plane, you get off of it first, whenever. It's I, great. But I'll never the forget. Snacks. That they walk around with, like, the flight attendants walk around with, like, food and all this stuff. But it was the coolest to go to a road game Mm -hmm. and pull up with a police escort. And that's the thing with hard knocks. Like, when you see that, like, you see the police escort with the buses. Mm -hmm. We went to – so I went to New England and watched them play the Patriots. Yeah. And fans were throwing things at the bus. You drive through, like, a a local little town. It was honestly the coolest thing ever. Isn't it? Like, NFL football, to me – is the greatest mm-hmm. of any entertainment yeah. around. But it's even cooler behind the scenes. Like the game on the field is one thing. The behind the scenes stuff is is what makes it so cool. It's it's not only is it the the humans who are the most athletic and best at what they do on the yeah. field, but like off the field it's also like top tier, the best. Yeah. The best people who are, are, are the best at their jobs are in my opinion, a lot of them are working with NFL teams. Yeah. Yeah. It's very impressive, the, the humans in this building. And can you tell whoever does the merch for the Lions that this year they stepped up their game? I will do that. Like the ste- the, the merch has been better than it, ever. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so great. It appeals to everyone. Yeah, it's cool. You just listened to another episode of Off the Record with Danny Rogers. A new episode drops every Tuesday.